The Yamani technique is synonymous with intrascleral haptic fixation of an IOL. And it is a brilliant technique that I would be really proud if I had invented. And there are some masterful practitioners of this technique for fixating a lens to the sclera of the eye. And people that come immediately to mind are Dr. Mark Costco in Jackson, Mississippi, or Dr. Brian Kim in Georgia, Dr. Steve Safran in New Jersey. These are people who have made reputations for themselves by being so amazing at performing this operation. Um, but, you know, it's not the only way to fixate a lens to the wall of the eye in the case of a dislocation. There are other techniques. In fact, there's one that preceded the Yamani by at least a few years that has been famously pioneered by Dr. Amar Agrawal. And Dr. Agrawal's technique for scleral fixation is famously known as the glued IOL technique. Although it's a little bit of a misnomer because the technique doesn't necessarily involve any glue at all, and certainly it doesn't involve gluing the lens to the wall of the eye. The basic concept is you can uh, fixate a three-piece lens to the wall of the eye by externalizing the haptics via sclerostomies and then tucking them down into little scleral tunnels dissected with a 26-gauge needle. The advantage of a glued technique in my opinion, is several fold. Um, the first, the glued IOL, is a little bit technically easier to do. It doesn't require the same sort of technical skill, I think, as the Yamani technique. Um, and that is a nice thing to note, that you can do an operation that's a little bit easier that achieves the same results. Um, the second thing that I like about it is that in my hands, the glued eye well tends to give me better results. And specifically, I get better vision, and the operation is a little bit more predictable. And perhaps the reason for that is because all of the technique of the glued eye well, you directly visualize. There's no blind passes of the needle through the conjunctiva and the sclera. You can see exactly what you're doing the whole time. So for my patients, I think they've gotten better vision when I've done the glued IOL on them because I have less tilt of the lens and less decentration of the lens. But the third benefit of the glued IOL, which is kind of the topic of this video, is that I think it is a more versatile technique, which is to say you can use it in a broader range of circumstances. And specifically, what I mean is with a larger number of lenses. The Yamani technique famously originated with the CT Lucia, this Zeiss lens with the special haptics that are especially strong and robust. Now a lot of the master Yamani surgeons have switched over to the J&J &J AR40E lens, which also has kind of got some nice properties to the haptics and the optics. Um, but with a glued lens, you can use any three-piece lens, and it works just fine. You don't have to have a special lens from some special company, which is nice because um, often when you're dealing with a situation which you have a dislocated lens, you have a patient who has some mystery lens in the eye that may not be one of those two, and you can refixate that existing lens without having to remove it and put a new lens in. And that's especially useful when the patient doesn't have a three-piece lens in the eye, when they have one of these old posterior chamber one-piece PMMA IOLs, these enormous lenses that are sometimes used now but less commonly, when they dislocate, you can't perform the Yamani technique on them because their haptics are made out of PMMA. So they don't, or they made a big thick PMMA, so they don't melt. You can't treat them in the same way. So for patients with these lenses in the eye, you can't do the Yamani technique. You'd have to remove the lens and put in a new lens, but you can fixate them to the wall of the eye with glue. And that's what this video is about. This is a patient who's referred to us. It looks like they've got an anterior chamber lens in the eye, but they don't. This is a one-piece PMMA posterior chamber lens that dislocated into the back of the eye. 
The patient was being operated on by a retina specialist. The retina specialist didn't know exactly what kind of lens was in the back of the eye. He took the patient to surgery and he discovered this lens in the back. So rather than making some giant wound and explanting it, he brought the patient, he brought the lens up into the anterior chamber in front of the iris and concluded the operation and sent her to me. So two days after that surgery, we take the patient back to surgery and our plan is to scleral fixate this existing posterior chamber lens to the wall of the eye. And if we can do that, then we can avoid making a giant incision in the cornea, which would involve a lot more healing and a lot more risk to the patient. So here's how we start the operation. So I'm sitting at 12 o'clock, which I like, because that way I can perform pyridomies nasally and temporally. I get better exposure that way, and I avoid disturbing the conjunctiva up around 12 o'clock in the pace the patient would need some kind of glaucoma filtering operation in the future. So we make these pyridomies nasally and temporarily, and we achieve a little hemostasis there with a localized cautery. And once that's done, I mark the center of the eye and the placement of scleral flaps with this Ashvin Agrawal marker. And then 180 degrees away from each other, I make these two partial thickness scleral flaps, which I score with a 15 degree blade and then dissect using a mini crescent. And when you have a soft eye, this little wiggling motion is a great way to, in a controlled way, tunnel up through the sclera. Then I make a 23 gauge sclerostomy about a millimeter away from the limbus on either side, a few little paracentesis now, and then use an anterior chamber maintainer to keep the eye inflated. Then I'll make a main wound. Now in this case, you probably don't have to make a big main wound with a keratome, but I generally like doing that because with bigger wounds, it's just more convenient, easy access for me. So here I am making a three millimeter main wound off slightly to my right. And that's just because it's easier to maneuver in and out through that wound. And then I'll use a pair of coaxial forceps to handshake the haptic of this lens to myself. So I position the haptic in one hand, so I've grasped it, and then I handshake it through that sclerostomy to my other hand and pull it out. So we do this on both sides to externalize the haptics of this lens from the eye. So here I'm grabbing the first haptic and I'll just pull it out through this little sclerostomy. And then I do the same thing on the other side just to grab the haptic and pull it out 180 degrees away. And I really like this because it gives you direct visualization of the haptics and where they're emerging from the eye. There are no blind passes of the needle through the sclera. You grab the haptic and you pull it out. So it gives you great centration. And then to make these little tunnels with a 26 gauge needle, I just pass them shallowly through the sclera and then grab the tip of the haptic and just feed it into those scleral tunnels on either side. And yes, you could suture this lens to the wall of the eye, but when you have a sutured technique, you have a greater risk of phacodenesis, you have a risk of the suture breaking at some point, um, so it's less secure and it's less elegant than this way. And now where the glue comes in is you just repair the conjunctival pyridomies and the flap with some to seal glue. And if you don't have to seal glue at your facility, or if you prefer not to use glue, you can easily just repair the conjunctiva with vicral sutures, which I do about half the time. It just is a matter of personal preference as to whether or not you use glue at all. But uh, really the glue is not to hold the lens, it's just to repair these incisions you make in the conjunctiva at the end of the case. And here we are at the conclusion of the operation. The lens is perfectly centered to the wall of the eye. There are no stitches. We inflate the anterior chamber with saline and I put a little bit of an air bubble there also just to maintain pressure and to uh, keep the eye looking good. So um, I show this video because really the Scleral fixation of a lens is an enormous part of our practice. We do probably three or four of those a week, if you can believe it. And um, 
uh, which I think is a rarity, you know, a lot of times those are regarded as uncommon procedures, but they're a huge part of our practice. And the way that we do them always is with the Amar Agrawal glued IOL technique. I find for all of my patients, it gives me better control. It gives me better results when I do it. And um, there are some circumstances in which it's really the only way to fixate a lens to the wall of the eye, like a situation like this, where you have a PMMA IOL in the eye, and your only choice is to either remove that lens or to use that lens. And the way that I think using the lens is most easily accomplished is not by suturing it to the wall of the eye, but by doing the same thing we always do, by not adopting or changing our technique at all, just doing the normal standard glued IOL. It takes a weird, tricky, complicated case and makes it routine. It makes it just like we do all of our cases. So if you haven't started with the glued IOL, you ought to think about doing it because it's probably easier than the Yamani technique you're doing now. It might give you better results. And furthermore, you might find it more versatile for those situations in which you have a lens inside of the eye that you would have to remove through a big incision. This may free you from having to do that and make the operation quicker for you and better for your patients. So give it a try.